wood. It's an essential material that surrounds us in our everyday lives, shaping our homes and the furniture we use. But have you ever stopped to ponder the origins of this ubiquitous resource? Join us on a captivating journey into the world of the lumber industry, where we'll explore the intricate process of transforming trees into the lumber that shapes our world. The lumber industry plays a pivotal role in converting trees into the raw materials required for various products. It all begins with logging, where trees are carefully selected, felled, and transported to sawmills. However, it wasn't always as efficient as it is today. In earlier years, the lumber industry in the United States wasted over 70% of most trees. But thankfully, as the industry evolved, it recognized the significance of sustainability and began utilizing nearly 100% of each harvested tree. Let's take a closer look at the logging process itself. The faller begins by creating a notch or undercut on the side of the tree facing the intended direction of fall. The notch is a V-shaped cut made near the base of the tree. It serves as a guide for controlling the tree's fall and helps prevent the tree from splitting or falling in an unintended direction. Once the notch is complete, the faller moves to the opposite side of the tree and makes a horizontal cut, known as the back cut or felling cut. This cut is made slightly above the level of the notch and should be parallel to it. The back cut is carefully executed to ensure the tree falls in the desired direction. In some cases, wedges are inserted into the back cut to help guide the tree's fall and prevent it from binding on the saw or getting stuck in surrounding trees. Additionally, the faller may intentionally leave a small portion of uncut wood, known as the hinge, to act as a pivot point and control the tree's descent. The hinge allows for a more controlled and predictable fall. There are various methods used for log transportation depending on the terrain, distance, and available resources. Here are some commonly employed techniques. In mountainous or rugged areas, cable systems are often utilized. Steel cables are attached to the logs and then pulled by powerful winches or yarding machines. This method allows for controlled movement of the logs over challenging terrains, such as steep slopes or uneven surfaces. Tractors equipped with special attachments, known as skidders, are frequently used for log transportation. Skidders have grapple arms or winches that can securely hold and drag logs across the ground. These machines are particularly effective in areas with less challenging terrain. When logging operations are conducted near road networks or accessible areas, trucks and trailers become the primary mode of log transportation. The logs are loaded onto trailers or flatbed trucks, securing them with chains or straps to ensure safe transport. This method allows for efficient transportation over longer distances and allows access to multiple destinations, such as sawmills or processing facilities. In regions with water bodies like rivers or lakes, logs can be floated or rafted downstream to their destination. In this method, Logs are organized into large groups, forming rafts that can be guided through water channels. This traditional technique has been used for centuries and is still utilized in some areas where water transport is viable. At the sawmill, the logs are transformed into boards and other wood products. The first step is debarking, where the logs undergo a process to remove the outer bark. This not only protects the sawing equipment, but also prepares the logs for further processing. The debarked logs then move forward to the cutting phase. High-speed saws, such as circular head saws or band saws, are used to slice through the logs, resulting in rough-edged boards. The rough-edged boards are then ready for further processing. In the next stage, 
the rough-edged boards undergo additional processing using edgers and trimmers. These machines remove irregular shapes and square the edges of the boards, ensuring uniformity and improving the overall quality of the lumber. After the boards are processed, they go through a grading process to classify them based on their quality and appearance. This step ensures that customers receive lumber that meets their specific requirements. Grading standards are in place to ensure consistency and enable builders, manufacturers, and consumers to select the appropriate lumber for their needs. Once graded, the lumber may undergo drying or seasoning in specialized structures known as kilns. This process helps reduce the moisture content of the wood, making it more stable and suitable for various applications. In some cases, the lumber may also be planed to achieve a smooth surface, further enhancing its quality and marketability. The lumber industry recognizes the importance of waste reduction and recycling to minimize its environmental impact. Sawmills and manufacturing facilities actively implement practices to repurpose wood scraps and residues, ensuring they are utilized effectively. Wood scraps and residues that are too small for traditional lumber applications are often repurposed into wood pellets. These pellets can be used as a sustainable biomass energy source, replacing non-renewable fossil fuels in heating systems and power generation. Additionally, wood residues and byproducts can be transformed into mulch, which finds use in landscaping and gardening. Mulch helps conserve soil moisture, control weed growth, and enhance the aesthetic appeal of outdoor spaces. Sawdust, another byproduct of the sawmilling process, can be collected and used in various ways. It can be compressed into wood briquettes, which serve as an eco-friendly alternative to traditional charcoal briquettes for barbecuing and heating. Sawdust can also be incorporated into animal bedding, providing a comfortable and absorbent material for livestock and pets. By implementing these recycling and waste reduction practices, the lumber industry ensures that a significant portion of the byproducts and residues generated during the manufacturing process are repurposed rather than being discarded as waste. So, the next time you encounter a piece of lumber or a wooden product, remember the journey it took from the forest to your hands. The lumber industry's commitment to sustainable practices, including sawmill operations, recycling and waste reduction, and sustainable logging practices, ensures that we can continue to enjoy the beauty, functionality, and versatility of wood for generations to come.